This is spherical equivalent for V551 ocular motility and refraction. When we have spherical refractive error, we're altering the retinal blur sides. That's the critical part that makes the vision blurry is the, the size of the image on the retina. Here we have three examples, an emetrope, a myope without a pinhole, and a myope with a pinhole. At the top, the emetrope is focused on the retina. So that focal position has a very small spot size, so the retinal blur is very small. That's what lets us resolve letters or different objects out in space. However, once we have myopia without a pinhole, we have a focal position in front of the retina, and this leaves a larger blur circle on the retina. This larger blur circle prevents us from resolving that E because it's actually larger than the letter itself. Once we add in a pinhole though, even though we're focused still in front of the retina, we've reduced the retinal blur size. Because the retinal blur size is small enough, we can now resolve that letter because the blur circle is small enough. Well, that exists in astigmatism too. The only difference between myopia and astigmatism or hyperopia is that it now has two planes that are in focus, one in front of the other. At the top, we have an astigmatism with the plane of the retina focused on the retina in one spot and in front of the eye in the other spot. What that has is that the, the spot or the plane that's on the retina actually has a very small focal size, just like we talked about before, but that the image that's in front of the retina now has a larger focal size or lo lo larger retinal spot size. Because of this, the eye's resolution is limited by the larger of the two spots or the image that's in front of the retina. So the person doesn't see very well because of that. Using the spherical equivalent on the retina, we reduce that retinal blur size by finding the midway point between the two, which actually improves acuity. So again, the spherical equivalent typically has the smaller retinal blur size. And the reason why it's called spherical equivalent is it's the spot where the retina, the spot looks a sphere, as opposed to when the stigmatism where it looks like a line or an oval. How do we calculate the spherical equivalent? The spherical equivalent is simply cal calculated by adding the sphere power plus one half of the astigmatism power. Let's look at some examples. In this first example, we have a minus one, minus one at 180. The spherical, spherical equivalent is minus one plus minus one divided by two, or minus 150 sphere. In the second example, we have a plus one minus two at 90. The square spherical equivalent is calculated plus one plus half of the minus two cylinder, or plus one minus one, which gets Plano. There's no prescription in this spherical equivalent. You might say to yourself, well, why do I care about this? I will never use this. That is not correct. You will use this every day in your life. Situations to use the spherical equivalent. One, subjective refraction. As we're modifying people's prescriptions, we're changing their sphere power and their astigmatism. Whenever we change their astigmatism enough, we need to modify the sphere power to maintain with the spherical equivalents at all times, thereby giving us the best end results for our refractions. We also do it when prescribing the final Rx, when patients' astigmatism changes so significantly that we cannot give the full astigmatism change. So we have to modify within that to the spherical equivalent. And finally, we do that when converting to contact lens Rx's often, because contacts do not come in the exact astigmatism power that we would like. So during subjective refraction, whenever the patient accepts or rejects a half diopter of astigmatism, the sphere power must be changed by 0.25 diopters to maintain the spherical equivalent. If they reject astigmatism, add minus 0.25 diopters. If they accept astigmatism, add 0.25 diopters. Let's look at an example. The first patient is a minus one, minus one, 180 in the phoropter. That's what we found so far. The patient rejects a half diopter of astigmatism on the JCC power check. That means they saw the white dot, thought they looked, the white dot looked better twice in a row. Their new spherical power then is minus one plus a half of that half diopter change or a quarter diopter. Our new sphere power is minus one and a quarter. So the current Rx in the phoropter is minus one and a quarter minus a half at 180. Let's look at another example. In this case, it's a minus one, minus one at 180. 
And this time the patient accepts a half doctor more on the JCC with power check. Their new sphere power is plus a half di a quarter diopter. So our new sphere power is minus 0.75 sphere. The current RX within the foropter then becomes minus 75, minus 150 at 180. We also will change the, the spherical equivalent depending upon the, the final prescribing RX, especially when large changes in astigmatism, patients have difficulty adapting. Consider giving astigmatism in steps or cutting the cylinder. Guiding rule number 12, never modify the astigmatism correction without considering the effect on the sphere power. Here's an example. We have a 65 year old patient with complaints of distance and near blur. Their habitual RX was minus one sphere, our new subjective Rx from refraction is minus one, minus two at 90. Because of the age of the patient, patients who are older typically have difficult times adapting to prescriptions. And because two diopters of astigmatism is a large change to adapt to, we've decided to cut the astigmatism in half to only one diopter. That means though, we need to have the spherical equivalent in the final prescription. So our final prescription is minus 150, minus one at 90. The last situation where we oftentimes use spherical equivalents, which is similar to our previous example, is in contact lens. Let's say we have a patient's RX that's minus two, minus half at 10 degrees. Well, contact lenses, as you can see by these examples here, don't actually come in half to after astigmatism. We have sphere powered lenses, we have a 75 sill, we have a minus one and a quarter sill, and we have a minus 175 sill, but we don't have a half to after a sill. Which one are we going to choose and why? Well, obviously we're not gonna choose the one and a quarter and 175. They're pretty far away from each other. But we do have a situation where one's closer within the spherical equivalent, the minus two and a quarter is the spherical equivalent of our patient's prescription. Or we have our other option, which is only a quarter doctor of astigmatism away. Typically we will choose the spherical equivalent in almost all situations. That's because even though the quarter diopter of astigmatism difference in the, the astigmatism is small, it will reverse the axis to 100, making it very difficult for the patient to adapt to it. So we always choose the spherical equivalent of the lesser power whenever possible in astigmatism and contacts. Thank you.